Okay, welcome back everyone. In this video we're going to be looking at chapter 4, number 28. And this is all about drawing free body diagrams. So this is a very important skill, especially when you're working on uh, chapter 4 and 5 homework and actually for the entire rest of the course. Uh, being able to draw and label forces correctly is crucial. So uh, in this problem we have two boxes A and B which are on a horizontal surface and we are pulling box A with a certain amount of force and we're asked to draw the free body diagram oops, the boxes are mislabeled we're pulling box B. Uh, we're being asked to draw a free body diagram for box A in two different situations. First, if there is no friction with the floor and we're told that the two boxes move together. That means that there's no slipping and there's no acceleration of A relative to B. And that's a very important point. That's going to guide us. And so let's actually draw free body diagrams for both blocks. So first of all, let's start with block B. Here's block B. Here's the floor. Now what I suggest is that you still indicate that other blocks are there with a dotted or a dashed line. This lets you think about the entire system. So we have no friction with the floor. So this means that there's going to be a force from the pole. And when you draw forces, it's important to draw them acting going away from an object. So we wouldn't want to draw a pole like this. Okay. Then we have the weight of B, which I will indicate as WB, which could also be written as the mass of B times gravity. Okay, now we're going to have a normal force. I'll call this F normal from the floor. Okay, and let's zoom in a little bit. And then we're also going to have a normal force from block A pushing down on B. This will be Fn. And we'll, we'll say that this is A acting on B. Okay? Now, there's one more force, but before we draw that, we need to go and do block A. So let's do that. Let's zoom back out. And let's draw ourselves block A and keep in mind that B is still under it and there's the ground and so we have the weight of block A and if A is pushing down on B then B must be pushing down on A so this is the normal force of B acting on A and I should be very careful the weight of A will probably be about equal to that. Okay, now, if there's no acceleration of A relative to B, well then, how is A going to move to the right when B starts moving? The only way is if there is a frictional force here, the frictional force of B acting on A. And because of Newton's third law, if A acts on B, B reacts on A. So I'm just going to get rid of this normal force from the floor and just put it right here so that I can show that box B has a backwards force of friction of A on B. And so now we've successfully drawn all the forces acting on both of these blocks. Now in part B, it's a little bit different. We're told that there's friction with the floor and the friction with the floor has the same magnitude equal to the force of the pole. So that's very important. Let's start with B again. So here's B and here's A and many of the forces will be the same. We'll have the weight of B. We're going to have the normal force of A acting on B and we're going to have the normal force 
from the floor pushing up and this time we have the force of the pole and here's the floor we have friction from the floor acting on B and we know that those two are equal to each other okay so what that means for A is the following if we then draw A and we draw B underneath it. Now we only have two forces acting on A. We only have the weight of A and the normal force of B acting on A. Where is friction gone? Well, the thing is if the pole on B is equal to the friction between the floor and B then that's all that you need in order to get B to move at a constant speed. And because of that, there can't be any other horizontal forces acting on A, because otherwise there would have to be a reaction force to that acting on B, and, and then we wouldn't have the case that friction equals the pole. So there you have it, and it's important to practice drawing these free body diagrams. So make sure you look at the examples in the book. They'll give you further guidance on how to do this.